Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about quant personalities, but we're going to talk about it in the context of those involved in derivative pricing, and specifically option pricing with the Black-Scholes-Merton model. So for quant personalities, I think that you fit into one of four categories. Um, the four categories are going to be based on actual people. So the four people are going to be Ed Thorpe, um, Fisher Black, Myron Scholes, and Robert Merton. Uh, those are the four people that were really involved in the Black Scholes Merton model. So we're just going to dive in here. We're going to look at these from a personality perspective and kind of who they were or who they are uh, as people and not so much on the math side of what was actually done. So let's start with Ed Thorpe. Ed Thorpe is a genius, okay? There's no way to argue against that. Ed Thorpe is a genius. Um, he discovered the pricing model for derivatives, the Black Scholes model essentially. Um, before everybody else. So he's quite brilliant, but he didn't view it as a theoretical construct. He viewed it as a trading rule. And so he used it as a trading rule and he made money from trading off of that rule, which is the exact same mathematical formula as the Black-Scholes model. So from a personality perspective, I think those that fit with Ed Thorpe are those that are kind of charismatic in the sense that Ed Thorpe was more about making money, um, looking at mathematics, trends, and rules, and applying them to actual markets, and then trading off them and being somewhat of a risk taker. And so I think a lot of us enjoy studying Ed Thorpe, reading about Ed Thorpe, because you like the fact that like he's really smart and he's brilliant, and he's created this formula before everybody else, and then he takes it as a trading rule and he applies it and he makes money with it. So he's not interested in just publishing a paper and trying to be famous with it. He is more concerned with making money. Um, I would view him more or less as what I would call the trader personality. So you want to learn stuff, you want to be really brilliant, but at the end of the day, your goal is to trade, take some risk, right? He's a risk taker. Um, so he's kind of cutting edge and exciting. I think personality always, that's who he is. He is the trader. Next, we have Fisher Black. So Fisher Black, um, he was the guy that looked at the Black-Scholes model from the perspective that you had to have market equilibrium. So that was the condition that he was looking at and driving it. You'll see that he drives the Black-Scholes model from the CAPM. So CAPM is Capital Asset Pricing Model. It's a theory in finance. But for Fisher Black, his entire focus was theoretical based. He believed in economics, he was an economist by training, um, and he wanted to do things that were market equilibrium based, and for him the theory had to fit. The largest breakthrough, at least in my opinion, um, for the Black-Scholes model is the fact that the way they use risk-neutral pricing, it is still used to do derivative pricing on simple things, it is used in a very complex manner to do exotic options as well. So Black was more or less the theory guy. So Ed Thorpe was the trader, Black was the theory guy. Uh, Fisher Black was very risk adverse as a person. He was more focused on the academic side of studying and doing a lot of work and research, but things had to make sense to him. He wasn't gonna be the guy that went out there and made trades and investments um, just simply because it was working. He had to have the theory behind it. So that's who Fisher Black is. The third person here is gonna be Myron Scholes. So Myron Scholes um, has a background. He's a financial economist. Um, I've watched some videos on him in the past, but he grew up in a family that actually was pro-investing and they used to buy and trade penny stocks. And it was something that kind of drove his career um, and kind of made him who he was. Um, to me, he is the finance guy. For the Black-Scholes model for him, it was market efficiency. So he went back to the financial theory and he had to have market efficiency. That was what he was using to base um, the performance of Black-Scholes, uh, making sure that it met that theory. But overall, he is the finance guy. Um, he started LTCM with Robert Merton, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but he's the guy that's looking at traditional finance theory, trying to apply a little bit of rigor to it, and then using it to trade. So when you have Ed Thorpe, he's kind of the risk taker, the cutting edge genius. Um, I view Myron Scholes as more or less as the guy in the middle. He wants to take some risk, but it needs to be like a risk adjusted return. Uh, he's more concerned with the financial theory and less with the mathematics, where Ed Thorpe is very math driven. And then you have, of course, Fisher Black, who was more or less theoretical and strategic, but he wasn't going to be the guy that was taking the risk. And then finally, you have Robert Merton. Robert Merton is the mathematician in my eyes. Uh, his entire theory for the Black-Scholes model was arbitrage, um, kind of the condition of arbitrage, right? He wanted to look at it from a mathematical perspective, and he's the one that really added um, the depth to the model. So you had 
Black and Scholes that added a lot of theoretical construct to it. And then you had Merton who added the arbitrage conditions and added a lot more mathematics behind the actual model. And so there's a lot of conditions that he added to it, which is a good value um, from a quantitative finance perspective. And so Robert Merton is basically the mathematician. He's the math genius. He's the guy behind closed doors calculating numbers, but he also likes to take a little bit of risk. So the way I would organize these personalities here to wrap it up, from a risk perspective, you have um, Fisher Black, who's very strategic. He doesn't want to take a lot of risk. He's more concerned with the academic approach and kind of the workings behind the theory and the strategy. Then I view Myron Scholes as the guy that's a trader. He's traditional finance. He likes to use the theory a lot on the finance side. He also likes to use a little bit of mathematics and he wants to take on some risk. Then I'd put Robert Merton as a little bit more risk taker, but probably about the same as Myron Scholes. Um, they both did LTCM together as a big corporation. Um, they're both active in trading. So they're kind of similar in risk taking, but Robert Merton is more or less the math guy. And Myron Scholes is the finance guy. He has the traditional finance theory. And then finally with Ed Thorpe on the opposite end of the spectrum here from Fisher Black, Ed Thorpe is the risk taker. He's the guy excited. He's out there, you know, making things happen. He's doing a lot of academic research as well. Very bright, um, but he's more or less concerned with application of the mathematics. So you have theory on one side of Fisher Black, and then you have pure applied with Ed Thorpe where he's out there trying to make money. That's his goal. Um, all of these people, again, are very bright people. All of them have had very successful careers. All of them are highly educated. Um, I like all of them in their own unique different ways, right? I like Ed Thorpe because part of me wants to be that risk taker. Uh, I like, you know, Merton and Scholes because, you know, one's the mathematician, one's the traditional finance guy, and they're out there trying to make money, but a little less uh, ris risky as, you know, Ed Thorpe. And then you have Fisher Black on the far left here, which is more the strategist, the mastermind, uh, kind of putting theories and things together, but not really wanting to take on as much risk. So anyways, that's kind of my take on the four types of quants. Usually you fit into one of the buckets um, I'd love to see what you guys think in the comments below. Which person do you think I most align with? Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.